I'm Logan. I'm Hallie Jacobs, and Nick Federa is on the camera. We wanted to um, study the biomechanics behind the different arm slots in baseball. Um, why we chose this was it's something that's not been commonly studied, and in youth, it's something that's drilled into kids' heads that you should always throw it over the top because coaches want to pay for velocity while the kid's younger and has to develop. But we wanted to figure out what is truly the difference between all these different arm slots. And there's four of them that we'd be analyzing coming up. We went about this project by using an iPhone 10 camera using a normal, normal speed at 60 frames per second. And we did another set at slow motion, um, which captures 240 frames per second. We went to Ed Price Field in High Point to have Logan throw four different pitches four at normal speed and the same four at slow speed. And then we went to the uh, physics lab and we used Logger Pro to track the trajectory paths of each of the pitches, which gave us vertical displacement data and velocity data to analyze. This was the over the top arm slot, so you can really see, like, it comes out of the hand fairly flat. You have this one point that was above the release point as the ball kind of just rolled out of the fingertips. But you begin to see that steady, steady, steady uh, decrease in elevation um, as the ball progresses towards the plate. Um, this pitch in particular, we gauged uh, the average velocity of the entire pitch would be about 72.7. Um, so that's basically what the batter would see. Um, but the radar gun would pick up um, about 78 and a half miles an hour. So fairly normal velocity. Um, and basically following the trajectory path that we were anticipating. Following the over the top slot, we have the three quarters arm slot, which is just barely above the 90 degree plane, so a little bit on there. Um, we saw a fairly flat exit point here and all the way through the path until towards the plate. Um, near the plate, however, Logger Pro decided that it was a great idea to crop off some of our image. So, you know, fortunately, you can't see the end point with this, but still, you can gradually see. You can see the gradual decline um, in vertical displacement. Um, this pitch in particular we gauged to be about 76 miles an hour in average velocity. Um, so again, that's what the batter would see. And maximum velocity we uh, in our data saw that it was about 80.9 miles per hour. So again, right where, we, right where the data should be. And uh, that's what we're looking for. The trajectory path was still um, what we were really looking for, so it was in the right direction. So this was our um, sidearm analysis. Now this pitch was gauged at about 74 miles an hour for our average, uh, while the max velocity was about uh, 79.9 miles an hour. And again, you can see this arch is gradually beginning to appear as you lower the arm slot down. Um, you can see gradually it rose a little bit out of the hand for a longer period of time than we saw it over the top or three quarters and you can see the gradual decline is a little bit more evident um, here as it ends at relatively around the, the batter's knees.
last film analysis was our submarine arm slot. Uh, we found the trajectory path to be a little bit more uh, extraordinary with this one. So you can see the, the initial release point was significantly lower than any of the other arm slots, of course. But you get to see this steady increase in height out of the pitcher's hand until it reaches a maximum right around this area, about halfway through the plate, uh, about 30 feet, and gradually it comes back down. And we get that little parabolic arch all the way back down to the strike zone. We uh, were able to calculate the speed of this pitch to be for an average of roughly 70 miles an hour, while the maximum velocity that it reached was about 78 miles an hour, and that would be ideal. So going into more depth on what Logan just talked about, these are four graphs on each path of the ball for each pitching motion. And as you can see, it's a little more exaggerated. And rather than using these as an accurate projection of how the ball actually travels through the air, as the actual path is a little more gradual than this, this shows us a better comparison between each pitching motion. And as you can see, three-fourths and over the top are much more similar to each other than the rest, being as they have the most similar release point, with sidearm being a close second, and submarine just being completely different from the rest, being as it has a very low release point and the ball starts its path upward, whereas the rest just kind of have a bit of an upward start due to a bit of a backspin on the ball. As we can see, the over the top has the highest end point, as it also has the highest release point, with Supreme having the most parabolic arch to his path. All right, so after obtaining our data at the baseball field and after following our filming, uh, we were able to find calculations, vertical displacement of the pitch, and basically what we're looking at is how far does the ball move up out of the pitcher's hand and how far does the ball move down. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Nick, let him explain some calculations here. So after gathering our data, we had a slight issue with Logger Pro. Um, Logger Pro was unable to accurately measure our vertical um, displacement, or rather just the height in general. But what it was able to calculate correctly was the difference between each point. So what we had to do to fix this issue was we had to physically measure the release point uh, during Logan's four uh, motions of pitching. We essentially just added the difference between each point to uh, figure out what exactly the displacement was and the vertical height was for that point in time for each motion. So at the top here you can see we have, this is uh, the release point and the initial velocity in the y direction as well as the point in time each uh, vertical displacement was recorded. So this is uh, over the top and you can see we have 1.8 meter release point 
and we end it with a 1.03 meter uh, end point. And our highest uh, max height was 1.86 meters. For the 3 fourths arm slot, we had a 1.63 release uh, meter release point and a 0.62 meter end point with a 1.69 uh, max height. For a submarine, we had a 0.61 meter release point with a 1.01 meter max height and a 0.58 meter end point. And for sidearm, we had a 1.35 uh, meter release point, a 1.49 meter max height, and a 0.51 meter end point. And now I will give it back to Logan to talk about what these numbers mean from more of a baseball standpoint. Each and every time that you see this initial um, height, so that means the ball came out of the pitcher's hand at 1.8 meters off the ground. Now you of course see this initial rise, which makes sense because you put a backspin on the ball initially, so you're actually somewhat raising it out of your hand. Um, but of course as you throw over the top and you get to throw downhill, you start to see this sudden decrease in height that appears to be really quick towards the end, almost exponential. And you actually end, um, well that particular pitch that we analyzed, ended up about a meter off the ground, which given to a batter's normal height of about six feet, or six, six feet this way, um, be right at belt, belt high. So it would be a strike. Um, so the numbers relatively work themselves out, and it's a good measurement of where the ball went at. And you can see this across the board, um, relatively similar data in terms of trends. Um, so three quarters, of course, you release a little bit lower, um, but still you end a little more than a half a meter off the ground, which on me is right above the knees. So given, it's still fairly accurate. Um, moving on to submarine. Now this one's a little bit tricky because initially, with this arm slide, you're actually throwing up. Um, so when you, when you flick your wrist, you're actually throwing against gravity. Now, the ball will reach a, a uh, peak in the arc of the trajectory path, and uh, you can see it actually right here at 1.01. That's the maximum height that ball reached. So it only went as high as the batter's belt. So from that point, it kept going down, 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 until a little bit more than a half a meter again, which would have ended at the batter's knees. Um, lastly, moving on to sidearm, so straight out to the side of the shoulders, you have a half meter high end point, which yet again ends right at the knees, still likely in the K zone. Um, so everything seems to check itself out, and our data seem to be pretty reliable. Through our research, we were able to analyze, compare, and contrast four different arm slots in baseball. According to our data, the three quarters arm slot threw the fastest pitch at 81 miles per hour, which was not what we were expecting to find, but it could be due to the arm slot familiarity of Logan, our pitcher. The side arm and the submarine arm slots were our slowest recordings in terms of velocity, which was expected prior to the beginning of the study. According to trajectory, the over the top arm slot did in fact give us the straightest, least par parabolic trajectory path followed by the three-quarter arm slot, with the side arm slot following shortly behind. The summary trajectory pass was obviously different from the others, with a very evident upwards motion at the beginning and sinking back down after the re reaching a maximum height. So what does that mean for each arm slot? So for the over-the-top arm slot, it has the straightest path to the plate. In most pitchers, this would reduce the time it takes to reach the target, thus increasing velocity. While quicker, a str straighter pitch may be easier to hit uh, for the batter. For the three quarters arm slot, um, a median between over the top, which is a median between over the top and slot side arm slots, would allow for a little more vertical displacement of the ball, which might make hitting at the baseball more difficult for a hitter, especially if the pitcher can maintain a high velocity. When talking about side arm. Um, 
While somewhat able to keep up with the three quarter and over the top arm slops in terms of velocity, the trajectory path of this ball allows for greater vertical displacement, particularly towards the end of the pitch. If a pitcher can sustain a high velocity in this arm slot, tracking the ball to hit would be very difficult. Now in the last one, submarine, this arm slot was extremely difficult, different from the rest, particularly due to initial upwards motion of the pitch. While this arm slot has a tendency to produce lower velocities, the vertical movement of the pitch is so much greater than the other arm slots. Vertical displacement during the time the pitch, pitch travels would com uh, compensate for the lower velocities produced by a submarine pitcher. So there was some room for error because it's not all perfect. So any errors found within our data would likely be due to user error with Logger Pro and Logan, our pitcher, with the different arm slots that he threw since he was more familiar with some other than others.